right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you know. And here I'm at a, today I'm at a special event uh, that was invited by Volvo Canada down here in downtown Toronto to actually come out and see the EX30 model. But lo and behold, they had the EX90, which is another new all-electric that Volvo is coming out with and offering. So I want to take a few minutes and start the show by talking about the EX90. And I'm here with Stefan. How are you, Stefan? Hi, very nice to see you. Welcome. Thank Th you for coming. Thank you. Glad Steph to have you here Stephane today. Stefan is the big guy from the product uh, development standpoint and product marketing he's got all the deepest darkest secrets but I'm going to ask him stuff that he can answer today and I'm excited to actually see uh, the EX90 in person now knowing that the XC90 is you know a great selling product for a Volvo so you know knowing that that is a huge following that you guys have in the full-size SUV realm to be able to to bring out a great all-electric offering to go after not only those customers but new customers that, that need that, that type of versatility I think it's a great thing what can you tell us about this vehicle okay thank you so much what I'd like to do is welcome you to the fully electric Volvo EX90 this is our seven passenger flagship SUV that we're going to introduce in Canada uh, later next year mm -hmm. and we're happy to have you here so I can showcase some of the great features of this car we talked a little bit off camera about the lights and just the design language, but maybe you could quickly run through some of the thinking around that. Yeah, so since it is fully electric, there is actually no grill on this car. Mm -hmm. We've taken the design language is really to keep it minimalist while aerodynamic at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you can see that with the flush, the flush glazing here, the clamshell hood, and the low coefficient of drag, the lower roof line versus an XC90, which you see today on the market, uh, really helps with the aerodynamics of the car. The other thing that's really, really unique about this car is the next level of headlights. So these mm -hmm. are fully LED headlights. Volvo's known for having its Thor hammer headlights, which is kind of like a hammer. And these actually open up, kind of like what we call a modern day pop-up headlight. And they close. So at night driving, when it's open, you still have that Thor's hammer look without actually um, diminishing from the look of the car while still able to use your headlights. Pretty cool stuff, I like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's also kind of got the theme like, you know, it's hitting the nail into the ground. So. Exactly. But, you know, they're very functional and strong LED headlights. You know, they'll project nice, get a good field of view for you. So, yeah. you know, I, I love that you're incorporating some unique technology and designs into a very functional aspect of the vehicle because, you know, being able to see is a critical aspect of, of Yeah, of and that. actually when you even approach the car, mm -hmm. uh, it has a welcome sequence. Mm -hmm. So you're approaching the car, you have your key as your, your phone as key. Right approach the car, door handles will open, it'll kind of welcome you with a little mm -hmm. wink, and you're kind of ready to go and on your way. I love it, love it. That's a good thing about EVs. They're, they're on like a light switch and they're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, and this thing is on like a light switch. Yeah. It is fast, so <laughs> this car can actually go zero, well, there's two versions of the car, okay. uh, mm -hmm. performance or non-performance. If you mm -hmm. have the performance version, 496 horsepower, zero to 100 kilometers in 4.9 seconds. Wow. So wow. that is gets you up to highway speed quick yeah. and confidently. Uh, to keep yeah. you and yours around you safe. And both versions are only in Canada all-wheel drive, correct? They're just dual motor offerings? Yeah, so for the Canadian market, we are introducing mm -hmm. this as a twin, we call it a twin motor all-wheel mm -hmm. drive only. Mm -hmm. um, we do have, you know, rear-wheel drive single motors on our other products, yep. but for this car, with what we're getting, we think that the all-wheel drive is, the twin motor is the right way to no. go. Makes sense to I me, mean, you know, good towing capacities, all that kind of stuff. People can yeah. look at the website for specs. Now, obviously, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the XC90 is a great product for you guys, a very versatile, you know, big, can tow, can do all kinds of stuff. So again, you have a big interior, you got three rows, so enough to carry lots of people and lots of stuff, and a good use of sustainable materials, not only in, in what's being put into the car from a manufacturing, but in how you manufacture. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think uh, what I'd like to touch, touch on a little bit is that we use a lot of recycled materials in the manufacturing mm -hmm. of this car. Not only is the re material recycled, but the, the plants that actually produce the car are running on uh, energy efficient, climate neutral power. Nice. Um, the steel in this car is 15% recycled. The mm -hmm. aluminum is 25% okay. recycled. Wow. And the plastic is 15% recycled. So, you know, creating cool. those materials from scratch creates a lot of carbon emissions. It's yes. not really too good for the environment. Yeah. So the more you can recycle and reuse, the better it is just for everybody. Absolutely. And um, I wanted to talk quickly about some of the technology because, you know, it's, it's not hard to see what that hump is in the middle, but you know, you've got an array of cameras. I even noticed on the side that you have two cameras per side, one for a blind spot and one to complement the 360 view. Maybe you could tell us about that and that hump on top there. Yeah, so the car has an array of cameras, radars, and sensors that mm -hmm. all work together to keep 
the car. We call it kind of like a safe space technology. It monitors mm -hmm. the entire space around the car and yeah. inside the car. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the cherry on top, I guess we could say, is, yeah. is the LiDAR Literally. system at yeah. the, uh, on the top of the car here, which nice. really helps uh, the car see in the dark. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, one of the main features of the, of the mm -hmm. system. So if you're driving down the highway at night, you know, you have these great headlights, but if there's something down the road, this thing can see around 250 meters in the dark. Okay. That's about the distance of two football fields, wow. just to put it in context. Mm -hmm. So if there's like a, you know, a tire that fell off of somebody's car or a stop car with no lights working, mm -hmm. that can detect it and warn you in plenty of time for you to take evasive action. Very nice. Uh, sl or slow down or do whatever you need to do to keep yeah. yourself, your car and your family safe. And this is Volvo's first implementation of LiDAR, is that correct? That is that is correct. It'll be standard on all EX90s. Okay. And this is the first car that we've introduced it on. Um, so we talked about, you know, the vehicle itself. Um, I think you mentioned the range, but maybe you could talk about that in the battery pack and the charging speeds as well. Yeah, so this car does have an 111 kilowatt hour battery okay. pack, so it is quite large. Mm -hmm. But with that, you can still fast charge at 250 kilowatts. Nice. Uh, from around 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes. So okay, if you need to stop on the highway, take a break, yep. have something to eat, there's plenty of time to oh, get yeah. you back up to. to and that range is up to EPA rated 480, is that correct? That's correct, yeah, we're estimating around 480 kilometers. Yeah, which is great. Uh, that's kind of the norm now, and it's great to see um, that, you know, a, a smart battery size is not overly big, you know, it's kind of right in that, that nice mean for this size of a vehicle, you do need something bigger. Plenty of um, range to get to your cottage. Absolutely, and some good clearance to get through this, tall grass and all that kind of stuff. Um, anything you want to talk about this that we haven't mentioned in closing about the uh, uh, about the um, EX90? I had to think about that for a sec. About the EX90, and you know, it's not going to be coming to the Canadian market till 2024 or 2025. When do you uh, anticipate? We're expecting customer deliveries in the summer of 2024. Okay. So, so about a year uh, from now. About yeah. a year from now. Okay. Um, where you'll also be able to, by the end of this year. Uh, place your deposit, build okay. your car on the configurator on Good. our website if you're interested in purchasing one of these. Excellent. Uh, the other thing I want to touch base on a little bit with this car is just the technology in it itself. So mm -hmm. it has a Google system, yep. which runs, you have your Google Assistant, Google yep. Play Store, Google Maps, all built into the car with your mm -hmm. data included for four years. Um, and it does get over-the-air updates. Mm. So you can have your car you know, as smart and as up-to-date as possible, yeah. as frequently as possible, that Volvo very rolls nice. out the software. So very, nice. very, very useful. So. Yep. Excellent. You know, and again, the OTAs give vehicles, they just get better with age, you know, kind of like us, right, Stefan? Yeah. We, you know, we just get better with age. So I love that about EVs. Now, I think you guys are going to do quite well. There's no price or anything yet announced on this, so stay tuned for any MSRP information. Uh, but as you heard, we should start seeing first customer deliveries uh, FCS next summer-ish, uh, about a year from now. And, and I'm excited to see the progress and, and I'll be looking forward to getting behind the wheel of one of these at some point within the next year. So uh, thank you very much for your time, Thanks Stefan. For coming. Excellent, thank you for, for having me. All right. All right, and now to the main part of the program. I'm here standing next to the newly announced EX30 product from Volvo. And I'm really excited to be standing next to this because it's a smaller vehicle. It's still a compact SUV, but it brings it down, which means you know the price will come down, uh, much making it more affordable for the mass market, but still retaining that luxury brand that Volvo is and all the heritage that comes with it. So I'm really excited. This is Volvo's smallest uh, SUV ever that they've made, and I'm really happy to see it in a fully electric uh, format. Now, read you some specs here. Um, so again, the EX30, they're I say entry level, but you know, Volvo is a premium brand, so the entry level is pretty darn good, right? Um, it comes in a couple different variants. Uh, the first variant that they're going to uh, have out is their single motor rear wheel drive. Uh, it also will come in an uh, extended range rear wheel drive and then an all wheel drive motor. Um, and let me give you some of the specs on that. So the signal motor rear wheel drive will have 51 kilowatts. Of, it's an LFP battery pack as well. A rear wheel drive, as I mentioned, single motor, putting out uh, 272 horsepower and three, 253 pound-feet of torque. So definitely going to make this thing get up and go um, quick enough with a range, EPA range of 322 kilometers uh, or about 200 miles, um, zero to 60 in five and a half seconds, all that kind of stuff with some light towing capabilities as well. And the standard um, 10 to 80% uh, range, it'll support up to 150 kilowatts of DC fast charging, uh, AC fast charging up to 11 kilowatts, so that's good for home charging, but it gives you that fast charging 10 to 80 in about 26 minutes, so that 20 to 30 minute range, which is great. 
You step up to the dual, to this, the extended range, and what you get is just a bigger battery pack. You go from the 51 to a 69 kilowatt hour pack. Um, same kind of horsepower and torque spec, so nothing changes from the motors, but the range goes up to 442 kilometers of EPA range, which I think is great. Uh, very, a little bit quicker, um, zero to 60. Uh, and towing a little bit better as well, 1,400 kilograms versus 1,000. Uh, where this, where the, the mid and the top um, models go, or rear wheel and the all wheel drive go, the extended range is on the charging. And um, they up the AC to up to 22 kilowatts if you have the right chargers installed. So that's pretty quick for a small vehicle like this. And DC fast charging, they will support up to 175 kilowatts that so giving you that um, 28 minutes roughly 26 to 28 minutes 10 to 80 percent again still under that 30 minutes which i think is pretty important go up to the third powertrain which is the twin motor performance all-wheel drive same battery pack 69 kilowatts but what they've done is boost the power obviously you get 428 horsepower and 401 pound feet of torque and again that's a lot for a little vehicle like this uh, 426 kilometers of range so about the mid spec in the range and uh, same, a uh, little bit better towing at 1,600 kilograms. And again, that 22 kilowatt AC support for charging and 175 kilowatt for DC fast charging support. Those are all the power specs. Just quickly show you the rear seat in here as I get in. So nice uh, wide door. Yeah, it looks actually smaller to get in than it actually is. I got in here with no problem and I have a good amount of room, lots of headroom even with the roof. Uh, it's a very comfortable and, and neat looking back here. Um, yeah, I think it'll be do well. Good job. Now, one thing I like about the Volvo products is the simplicity, not only in their design, but in their interiors as well. And as you can see by the B-roll and pictures here, again, it's got that minimalistic interior, similar to what we've seen on the XC40. Uh, but in this case, there is no driver's binnacle. So it really is just a single screen. Uh, Tesla-like experience where you have your portrait screen, which all your functionality is going to be there using the Google interface. Um, they support all the, the Google products, but a very nice interior. Again, you'll have a, a whole slew of different interior options and color patterns and materials, a lot of sustainability in the materials there, again, that you can see. It's got that single 12.3 inch um, high-res display, which will be everything on there, wireless Apple CarPlay, USB all over the place, all that good stuff, and still supporting over-the-air updates. And as I mentioned with Stefan when we were talking about the EX90, the vehicles just get better with age as they get more features and functions happen over time. So again, you know, to continue on cargo space, again, you get a good size uh, perspective of size. You can see, you know, how I'm 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and I'm towering over this car. So this isn't that big by comparison to what we've seen Volvo come out with. So I'm really enjoying that it's something smaller. But when we talk about cargo space, though, it doesn't give that up. Um, I like that they have this little hidden button, by the way, wiper on the rear, just take note and got the automatic hatch and it's got behind the second row, you've got a pretty decent amount of cargo capacity of about 400 liters or 14.1 cubic feet. It's got a pretty nice little well in here with some room underneath and I'll show you some pictures uh, on this as well. And you put those uh, seats down, you get um, up to 904 liters of cargo space or just under 32 cubic feet and that's pretty good for a size vehicle and class of vehicle that this is to be able to store lots of stuff do some Costco like Kia runs, all that kind of stuff. So they've, they've made a good use of space. I'm uh, really happy to see that. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to introduce Tara Powatic. She's the, you gotta tell me again, director Product of- Product and Technology Director. Product and Technology Director. So many titles, so little time. Good to meet you. Thank <laughs> really you very much nice for taking to meet the time. You too. Thank Thanks. You. I'm like, super excited. As you've seen, we've been talking off camera about this, uh, about this uh, great, great offering that you guys have come out with. What can you summarize Volvo's intent on the EX30 as uh, to the marketplace? What's your take on that? Yeah, the EX30 really brings together our commitment to safety, our commitment to sustainability, mm -hmm. and beautiful Scandinavian design in a shot of espresso. That really <laughs> like embodies that. Yeah. the EX30. It is mm -hmm. this beautiful, confident lines. It's EV purposefully uh, designed. Yep. It's 
and sustainably produced. And you know, and very competent from an EV perspective, right? You know, this is out of the gate an EV design for consumers is, you know, is an EV, is an all electric going to work for me? But with these kind of stats with good charging and good all around performance, you know, there's no reason that they shouldn't be looking at something like this, correct? So that's absolutely true. When you look at the EX30, this is offered in two different powertrains, mm -hmm. single or, yeah. or uh, dual motor, and it's offering estimated 443 mm -hmm. kilometers of range. Mm -hmm. So that's taking you wherever you need to, both yeah. in the city or weekends away. But I'm really happy to see some smaller footprint products come to market. I think as Canadians, you know, we've kind of lost sight a little bit. It's all this SUV and pickup truck kind of market, and I get it. If that's what people want and that's what's selling OEM, they're going to build it. But we've kind of moved away from these conservative hatchbacks and sedans that we used to see. And I'm really glad to see something of this footprint and size come back because it is unique, right? This is kind of different in that luxury market, correct? It is absolutely. In the luxury segment, this is the first of its kind in the EV space and mm -hmm. in this size. Mm -hmm. And really, the there was very thoughtful design put yes. into the vehicle so that you have great great space within the interior. It feels very spacious, mm -hmm. light and airy. We have this living room type approach, um, centralized display, a lot of the functionality centralized as well. So really, even though it is a compact vehicle, you really feel as though you're in a spacious, um, a spacious uh, SUV. Yeah, it's got good interior dimensions. You know, I sat in it, showed people how to, it's easy to get in and out. I like that it sits just a tad higher than a normal sedan, so you've got a bit more visibility aspect. So, uh, you know, again, I'm really happy that you guys are going after this kind of market segment, you know, as you, uh, as you scale down into some smaller vehicles that still offer great performance, the luxury, the safety, and all the, all the check boxes, again, that Volvo is known for. Um, was there, is there any final thoughts, if you were to summarize this vehicle, to potential uh, people that are looking at EVs that don't really want a big vehicle? maybe it's a secondary vehicle or you know as a smaller primary urban commuting around what would you say to those folks i think urban is a really interesting nod and mm -hmm. when you look at we brought in all the traditional volvo safety to this vehicle yeah. but then enhanced it thinking about that urban setting so you know driver alert system to make sure that no oncoming cyclists are ever injured mm -hmm. by a door opening on the passenger or driver mm -hmm. side um, front intersection detection, yeah. advanced um, alert system, all features that have been added in to really consider that urban lifestyle mm -hmm. um, and to really help to protect not the, only those inside the vehicle, but also those surrounding. And I think that's something for someone who's looking at the EV market to really look at, have a look at those safety features. I think yeah. the other piece to the EX30 that I'm particularly proud of is driving an EV as one element to mm -hmm. your sustainable life, lifestyle. But the other element is how it was produced. Mm -hmm. This vehicle has 25% recycled aluminum, 17% recycled plastics, and 17% recycled steel, mm -hmm. making it one of the most sustainable um, EV vehicles produced right. and really keeping that carbon total carbon footprint of uh, its lifetime down. Yeah, as Stefan mentioned, as far as the manufacturing, what you guys are doing, green energy and stuff at the plant level. Now, will these be built in North America as well? I know the 90s are going to be in Charleston, South Carolina. Are these in, in a similar area? So all of our vehicles are designed in Sweden, yep. and then there's factories all around the world. So mm -hmm. Europe, and as you said, Charleston, as well as China. So the EX30 will actually be produced in China. Okay, great. And then uh, brought in. So. Um, great. Well, I think it's, you know, with the price point that I talked about, if starting at 53.7, I think that's going to get a lot of interest from people. Um, it's great to see, you know, added the federal incentives. You look at provinces like Quebec and, uh, and BC, these are going to fly off the shelves, literally in Quebec for sure, getting 11 grand off. My goodness, you get a lot of vehicle at a pretty good price. <laughs> they are price to qualify. Price, price to, to qualify. qualify, exactly. And I, you know, I projected that I see the other models maybe coming there, but we'll wait and see. But you're absolutely right. You know, that sustainability and that lower total cost of ownership, right? You know, electricity. We're, we're so blessed in Canada in general, and specifically in Ontario, Quebec, where we have such cheap hydro rates that it's just, you know, five bucks to go 400 kilometers yes. in home charging or less. It's it's that cheap, and people think I'm crazy when I say that, but. 
it's going to be. So you're going to get a lot of luxury, a lot of affordability in a great package here. Absolutely. And these things should start, we should start seeing some uh, first customer ships by mid to end of next year. Is that the anticipated time well, frame? Well, starting this fall, Canadians can completely configure down to okay. the trim and spec okay. level, place great. a deposit either at, at a Volvo store or online on their own, whichever mm -hmm. they prefer. And then they're going to be uh, for deliveries in summer of 2024. There you go. So you're right here first. So, <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much again for inviting me out to this and a pleasure to speak with you off camera and on camera. I yeah. learned a lot today. I uh, hope you folks enjoy the, this, this look at the X30. I think it's a phenomenal product. It's going to do quite well. Thanks Thank very much for your time. Thank all you. Right, all the best. Thanks. All right. All right. I hope you enjoyed all that information about the EX30. I'm pretty stoked about this. Now, um, as we talked about, we don't ex expect these to come into the North America market till 2024, probably the latter part of 2024. Pricing was just announced Canadian-wise, starting MSRP, MSRP $53,700 for the base model, that single motor standard range. And that means that it's going to qualify for the federal incentive. And I, I'm anticipating, now there's no other pricing yet on the other trims, but it wouldn't surprise me even if the top spec entry level, you know, without the, the really, really top um, options, but the all wheel drive version, if it doesn't come under the uh, $65,000 range at 64,990 or something like that, uh, to, again, to stay within those uh, Canadian uh, ZEV incentive. Now, again, there's no pricing, so this is just my own analysis and my own thought that I'm hoping that it'll come out. But if I were looking at this, I would probably pick the single motor um, extended range because I think that's going to be the best value out of this. But, you know, to get into this at 53.7 plus your taxes, freight PDI, and then you get your 5K off for a Volvo product that's really well equipped, I think you're going to enjoy that. So I I'm, I'm, uh, can't wait to get behind the wheel of one of these probably sometime next year, but I think they're going to do quite well with these models. Check out Volvo's website for all the different specs and all the different offerings. Put your name down on a wait list, I believe, or to get more information. Uh, good on Volvo. I'm really happy to see this model here. And that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. All of my contact information and stuff is coming up into the show, so stay tuned for that. Again, thank you for my Patreon supporters. And keep your eyes on the marketplace. Great to see these kind of products coming in from the larger OEMs, bringing it down in size, bringing some cost advantages there as well with a really nice offering, both in range and in driving experience and customer comfort. So appreciate that. So everybody take care. Until the next time, stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.